Hello and welcome if you're new to my channel and if you're a subscriber, a warm welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be recommending some of the best handbag brands when it comes to affordable luxury. I started a series a couple of weeks ago entitled Hierarchy of Handbags and in that series, I started with recommending some of the best brands when it comes to everyday luxury. The next level up, affordable luxury, is what I'm focused on today. But what I'm going to do is group the next second and third level, so affordable and accessible core. And I'll be focused on brands that are priced between 500 and 1,500 pounds. I'm Anesu Sagonda and I manage a luxury lifestyle management business in London. My content is largely educationally focused and geared towards people who are typically new to money or keen to explore alternate mid lux or super brands that are a little under the radar but still heavily weighted on quality. <laughs> I felt a little bad after the first video had gone out uh, where I was recommending some of the best brands for everyday luxury and I shortchanged you and could have added another two or three brands, particularly on the new up and coming side. I had five of your old established brands and then three up and coming new brands that had proven themselves in terms of consistency and they're all under 10 years of age. But what I will do is at the end of the series, I will talk about another two possibly three brands that I recommend as brands to have on your radar for 2021 so do subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on that video but in this video as I said I'll be focused on affordable luxury I have about 16 17 brands that are worth mentioning it's a lot but there's a lot in terms of quality which goes without saying I've gone for the very best for this particular range but i have i want to encompass a selection that's incredibly diverse in terms of the budgets the the, the prices the styles the colors um, and the designs so i cater for pretty much everyone that that watches my videos but in this video i'm going to look at maybe seven or eight depending on how i'm doing for time and then the balance later on my first brand I touched on briefly in a video entitled uh, Brands That Are Loved by the Super Wealthy. I'm going to attach that video above. It's a German brand called Jill Sander. Two words perfectly describe this brand. Quality and minimalism. Whether it's their clothes, shoes, handbags, whatever it is from them. It's quality material first and foremost and then just minimal fuss. So the designs are very simple but very well made and highly effective and translates as I said to their handbags so made from phenomenal quality leather all the bags I'm going to talk about where they use leather it's going to be grain leather so either your full grain or your top grain leather so it's your your grain leather and then the details just very simple details but it's a well-made bag that looks well performs well and lasts a long time makes for a very good investment because the styles are classic and won't age my second brand is an eponymously named british brand anya heinmarsh it's quality and quirky think of kate spade that i mentioned in the everyday luxury video but it's your more mature take on your fun colorful playful whimsical designs she has a really good selection of styles so you have your classic leather bags made from your grain leather then you have your colorful toes with a, a whole range of different designs and then you have literally your wearable pieces of artwork so you're really fun playful pieces whether it's a piece of fruit a cartoon character a seasonal bag whatever it is she has it but it's a more mature take a more considered piece that someone who's maybe older my sort of age 40 and above wants the quality coupled with a fun piece in the craftsmanship it's a great brand and then if you want something also a little more understated in terms of not too loud on the logo they have the very delicate little bows uh, that are discreetly placed on the bags and also their signature tassel and then Anya herself is huge on personalization and craftsmanship so the craftsmanship coupled with the quality she's making a phenomenal product and then the personalization that's more about making the gift really personal whether it's to give to someone or to keep for yourself you've put thought and effort into that gift into that bag into making it um, personal specific to whoever you're giving it to or yourself so that's something they're very big on and I think 40% of their business is on the personalization element so it can be an initial crest uh, a phrase 
a name, whatever it may be, personalization is very big for Anya Haimash. If you're after a bag that's quality, it's fun for a more mature person and well-made, Anya Haimash. My third and fourth brands are incredibly popular in the Asian market. They are MCM and Burberry. MCM is Michael Cromer Munich. It's a German brand with a Korean owner, Sungju Group, and the bags are made either in Korea or in Italy. And what you buy into when you buy the MCM bag is the brand's distinct logo printed material called the Vesetos. And the Vesetos resembles leather, but it's actually a robust coated canvas that's very good quality and will last. So if you're somebody, for example, who likes the Louis Vuitton monogram but can't afford the Louis Vuitton dollar, great alternative. It's good quality, but the logo is going to be a little muted. Two styles I really like and would like to recommend. Firstly, they're backpacks. They come either in cognac facettos, in beige facettos, in the black facettos, and then you also have the, the studded design element. But I like them because of the design and also the fact that they're unisex. The other style is their reversible totes. They have the vasettos on the outside and then they have the more muted design on the inside. So depending on what you're wearing, the look and feel, you have options. My fourth brand is a British brand called Burberry, as I mentioned, and Burberry is Britain's largest luxury brand by sales. It's phenomenally popular in the Chinese market. And Burberry is known for their uh, tartan and also their trench coats. And they have the tartan pretty much in every single product um, option that they make. But what I like about Burberry and what really stands out to me is just their understated elegance. It's just a very simple brand, well made. You're buying into a British brand, you're buying Britain and also the heritage. It's, it's a brand that's over 150 years old. It has a lot of products that it produces that have that tartan in it. But when it comes to the bags, they have a huge selection. So there isn't a specific brag, a bag as such that I would recommend and say this particular style is their most popular. But what I really like are three. You have the first one, the Salisbury tote. So if you would like that full tartan look, but a more muted take, they have a number of takes. There's this more muted one and then a slightly more bold tartan. Then you have the Canterbury uh, leather tote. So it has the, the, uh, the tartan on the side. And then the third option, the one I really like, and this is, to me, encapsulates everything that Burberry is. It's their monogram leather crossbody. It's a, a, a grain leather bag. And it's just beautiful leather, very well made, a simple design. Everything that Burberry is, understated, elegance, quality all the way. My next two brands share the same creative director, Jonathan Anderson. The first brand is Loewe and Loewe is Spain's most distinguished luxury brand. It's a brand very similar to Hermes that has a wide range of products uh, from your homeware to your lifestyle, ready to wear, you have accessories, so your shoes and bags. And everything that they produce is made to a phenomenally high standard. But what I can't seem to understand about this brand is why it's so sleepy. You hardly see or hear of it unless you look for it or you're in Spain. Everything is, it's beyond under the radar. You, it's just literally off the radar, but the quality is just amazing. And I don't understand why. When Jonathan started at Loewe about eight years ago, he created the puzzle bag literally by accident. First year, until to date, it has been a best-selling bag for Loewe. It's a bag that's incredibly versatile and can be worn either dressed up or dressed down. You can carry it as a top handle over the shoulder. It comes with a removable adjustable strap, so it can either be crossbody, it can be over the shoulder, it can be behind your back. Whatever you decide to do, it works. Every season they change the colors, um, the textures, the sizes, just to keep things exciting, uh, keep the brand moving. The other bag I'd also like to recommend in Loewe is the hammock bag, very similar to hammock. Uh, but it comes with a lot of color. The designs tend to be quite colorful, quite bold. And what I particularly like about the hammock bag is that it gives me Lindy bag vibes. The Lindy bag is one of the bags from Hermes. 
I'll insert a picture. But it comes, the hammock comes at a fraction of the price of the Lindy bag, but with comparable leather and craftsmanship. Um, at an absolute fraction, fraction of the price, you're getting a product that's um, on the same level as that Lindy bag. Just slightly different, but the concept is the same. And then flipping over to the other brand, the eponymous brand, J.W. Anderson, where he's the creative director and also the owner. He describes his brand as the cultural agitator, whereas Loewe he describes as the cultural landscape. It's the more refined aesthetic, whereas his is very much about your gender bending, abstract clothes and accessories. And he has done fantastically well over the years. I mean, for you to stand between two very good brands and successfully produce very different styles every season says a lot about your level of organization, the team around you, and just your ability. But looking specifically at his bags, a number of bags, firstly, his best-selling bag, the Pierce bag. To me, it's like um, the two rings are your nostrils and then the ring is the nose barbell. And the barbell, especially in the context of your gender bending abstract, it's very much a sign of freedom. It's a rebellion. It's, you know, um, a very strong, a very bold sign. And then a slightly more muted take on the Pierce bag is the disc bag. So you still have the barbell, but it doesn't have the bold uh, nose looking design. And then the other bag, which I personally like, personally like my favorite is the anchor bag. I like it because of the simplicity of the design. And then you have the anchor, uh, the anchor bit. So the brand, and then you have the J bit, which is like an anchor. So it's the simplicity, a simple part, a very simple bag for somebody who doesn't want something too out there. And then the um, the buckle just adds the, the attention, um, fun bit of detail without being too out there. And then the final bag I'd like to recommend is the cap bag. And that's very much in keeping with this whole abstract gender bending theme of um, clothes being clothes and accessories being fluid. So the bag, the cap bag can be worn by either a man or a woman, regardless of the color. But J.W. Anderson and uh, Loewe, they are confidently um, supported and doing phenomenally well at the hands of Jonathan Anderson. My final brand is one that I would need to literally have fallen off the end of the earth to have not seen it, known it or heard of it. It's the youngest of all the brands I've spoken about today, but it's the most successful by a long shot. It's Off-White. Off-White is a brand solely owned by Virgil Abloh and Virgil is also the menswear artistic director. He created the brand in 2012 and by 2018, it had become the most popular brand in the world uh, in terms of sales, the number of searches and people browsing pages linked to Off-White. Off-White is a luxury streetwear brand and it's very much inspired by your skating and hip hop culture and geared towards a very young audience. And one thing that Virgil consistently gets asked is, why is your brand so expensive? And his argument is always, the problem is there's a lot of comparison. There's a lot of talk of brands such as Zara and Uniqlo, but for you to produce products at the high level that Off-White is, you are using quality products, quality materials, uh, you're paying, your, he's paying his workers a higher wage, the customs, the duties, all the associated charges are expensive. So it's reflected in the price of the products. But regardless of the hype, regardless of the outstanding designs, the styles, the colors, the logos, the brand is very high quality in terms of the material he uses and the craftsmanship. Got to give it to Virgil. He's done fantastically well. He started off at Fendi, then worked for Kanye West. And in all that time, he's learned a lot and he's managed to put together almost a foolproof brand that's just growing from strength to strength. Two bags I'd like to recommend. Well-known brands, very much on the radar, particularly the latter one, um, doing fantastically well. The first one is the Jitney. Jitney I like because it's just a simple bag in terms of the style. 
no fuss. But where you really get to appreciate it, and it's all part of the street culture vibe, is um, either the, the, the phrases on the bag, the bold logo, the designs, the design element. It's just, there's just a lot going on, very much in keeping with the brand. But I like the simplicity of the design. The other bag is his current bag that's doing fantastically well. It's the Meteor. It's a version. Uh, it's a derivative, rather, of the Jitney bag, except he has two big holes on it, which makes it uh, non-functioning. You cannot use the bag. All it has is a tiny pouch inside just to keep your, your bare minimum. So it's very much like your Jacquemus, where you can only keep one of your AirPods. It's that tiny. But the Meteor is very much... Uh, a piece of artwork. It's uh, an ultra cool piece. You walk around posing with it. It's not functional. You're not carrying it as a handbag to have your personal effects in there. It's very much a statement. Look at me, what I'm carrying, what the brand means. It's the most popular brand in the world. Look at me. It's a statement essentially. But if you want something a little more functional, still a nice bag and very much in keeping with the style and the colors and the designs which you would buy it for is the Jitney. But I've given you seven or eight brands, um, a very diverse selection of styles, of colors, and options. Whatever the occasion, whatever you, your age, there's something for you. If you want to know anything else in any more detail, do let me know as always in the comments down below. But otherwise, share, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you again soon. Take care.